Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, my name is Jeff Bacalar. I'm joined today by Dan Reichert and Jeff hello. Grubb. Hello, hello, Howdy. hello. Gentlemen, I, how are we? Never been better. I'm fantastic. Okay, wonderful. That's my line, but nevertheless, we can continue. <laughs> uh, we're here today to talk about a game called Redfall. Uh, Dan and I uh, were in New York City. What was that, last week, two weeks ago? I can't remember what is time, but we got to see this game and get around 90 minutes of hands-on with what I got to imagine is a near final version of the game. Maybe not like super duper final, but definitely final-ish. I, I hope there's still some polishing going on based on my experience with it. Yeah, so let's, so let's just preface like what we played this game on. We were playing them on PC. Uh, for my money, it seemed like they had maxed out all of the sort of fidelity settings, maybe to a fault, where the game was just not running as smooth as, you know, I would have maybe fine-tuned it on my machine. Yeah, I'm always the performance setting rather than resolution, so I'm not really sure what they were setting, but uh, yeah, it was... Th there were several things about this that did not feel uh, exactly as polished or finished as I would have liked, I would say. Yeah, I think, um, you know... And, and maybe like performance is something we can get more into the granularity of how it looked, uh, you know, a little further on. But, you know, I think for what I got out of this demo was now I completely understand what Redfall is. I think uh, the last trailer that they released before this story trailer that came out this week really sort of like explained, OK, this is this is the game. Um, and, you know, we got to understand that. So, so knowing what you know now, where do you stand? Uh, less interested, I would say. I, uh, I see what it is now. You know, I played that 90 minutes and it very much felt in a lot of ways to me, like something that would have come out near the end of the 360 life uh, cycle, or maybe like a launch Xbox one game. Uh, it feels very kind of post borderland success. Um, like it, there wasn't a lot of, uh, the missions, the open world uh, nature of it and going around and, and just doing activities in the world felt very rote, I would say. It felt very like, okay, here's these like hearts that you have to, like these hearts across the map that you have to destroy. Here's these little things to do. It felt very old open world design, I thought. Um, and Backlar, I, I was sitting next to you uh, and I was watching you. You went pretty quickly to the story mission that they set us up with. But they also told us like, hey, you can just also wander. And so I saw you were doing the story mission, and I figured, well, okay, I'm going to do the open world stuff, because, like, I love that. I love that kind of Breath of the Wild style, like, let's just run around and see what we get into. And I was disappointed in what there was to do. There was just a lot of running around, like, okay, here's some guys with guns, here's a vampire nest. Uh, I, I never felt particularly engaged in what I was doing moment to moment, or even, like, the skill tree level up type system. And I also did not like the characters or dialogue, so... Um, don't mean to be too harsh on a game that is not out yet, but, uh, I did not really, I didn't hate my experience. It just, it really didn't do a lot for me. Yeah. I mean, I think like, uh, you and I are a little different in how we sort of took in the game. Like, I, I don't think I, I was sort of maybe as, I don't know, I don't know if disappointed is the right word, but I, I, I there are parts of the, the game that I, I kind of dug, but I agree. I think the open world stuff, as much as we saw, right, like we did have a sort of limited uh, scope of what the larger game uh, will sort of open up and allow you to play, but we did have a bit of a slice of what that open worldness sort of felt like, and I agree. I think like none of that was terribly interesting. Uh, I did enjoy the the story mission that they uh they 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 sort of like set us up with and presented and you know that that was cool i think you know you get to they had us choose between four of the playable characters i think are are there more i can't remember if there's more than the four i do you remember i think they said there was four at launch i don't know if they insinuated that there's more coming or anything but there's definitely the four selectable that that we were given and, and so we, i think that's indicative of launch yeah, so each of the four characters has like uh, two special abilities and then like a like a an ultra ability that has a cooldown. Um, I played uh, as a character whose ultimate ability was like she summons her dead boyfriend to go and like beat up and kill other, you know, vampires and whatnot. And you know that's fine. Uh, I I think 
when it comes to the tone and like that sort of stuff, like I don't think it did necessarily anything for me uh, where I was excited or, you know, but I think at the same time, I'm sort of lukewarm on that where like, I didn't find it, you know, uh, um, you know, sort of like overwhelmingly, you know, cringy. I thought it was like, okay, maybe this humor is just not for me, but like, I don't think it dominated the sort of experience no. overall. It, it's not aggressive in the way that, uh, you know, a lot of other games can be. Like, there were, you know, maybe two or three lines where I kind of rolled my eyes and was like, oh, okay, that's kind of lame. But it's not like, it's certainly not the, like, high on life thing where something is screaming jokes at you in your face the entire time. Um, I think for me, it's just more, like, I mentioned Breath of the Wild and open world games. And we're talking about very, very different games. But when I like to explore, like, uh, Tachia, we, or I don't know if it's Tachia or Chia, uh, we did the quick look recently. I just like that ability to kind of walk around and explore and, and collect things and, and get abilities and upgrades and stuff like that. And again, this is first person shooter, co-op, zombie, very different style. Um, but walking around the town, there was just nothing for me. You know, it's like, okay, I found a side quest where I need to fix the popcorn machine at our, at our base. And, you know, I love taking a quest on, and then on my way to the quest, I see three or five things that interest me and kind of like, oh, take me off the trail, and, and I'm, I'm doing that now. And I just never saw anything. It's just the only things to do from our slice of the game was, like, look at the map and say, like, okay, I'm going to that side mission uh, marker, or I'm, I'm going to this vampire heart thing, and you go there and you do the thing, and you rarely find anything of interest outside of, like, oh, here's three dudes with guns on the way there. So uh, it just did not keep my attention at all, I think. Can I ask, uh, I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, here's one of the menus, like, showing off one of the weapons, or the uh, weapon screen. Uh, this stuff reminds me a lot of, like you said, Borderlands, Far Cry. Uh, mm -hmm. How much time are you spending, like, thinking about your gear when you were playing? Were you, like, upgrading your weapons pretty frequently, or was that not part of it? Not not a ton, because, like, Borderlands, you know, part of the whole gimmick from the beginning with Borderlands was, like, oh, we've got this kind of random thing where it's, like, oh, you never know, you're going to get this crazy rocket launcher that shoots spiraling three acid things and reloads super fast, then you can throw it and it explodes, and, you know, it's... It, the, the guns themselves made the loot collection and, and weapon stuff uh, very, very interesting. Here, there are different types, and there are different rarities, uh, I did not see a lot of difference between like, oh, okay, I got this uh, this base level stake launcher, and then I found this blue uh, stake launcher. It's just right. like, okay, the numbers are bigger. They're going to kill things more efficiently. But it wasn't like that fun novelty every time you get a new weapon like in Borderlands. And uh, here's, yeah. the, here's the skill tree. Oh, let me go back to it real quick. Uh, there's the skill tree. You, you, you guys, I asked you about like the skills and... Uh, how much yeah. fun they were to, to use. Uh, I mean, it didn't seem like they were too astounding. This is the studio that's mm -hmm. known for uh, uh, Dishonored and, you know, the blank ability and jumping around and, uh, you know, going invisible uh, and, and using those skills in interesting ways is like the core of their game. Do, did you guys yeah. feel that? I think, you know, I think they like, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to word this in a way that sort of, I mean, part of this is a bit of giving, uh, providing a bit of the benefit of the doubt here sure. because it's sort of like, we play for 90 minutes, right? Which mm -hmm. is really nothing. I, you know, they start, what did they give us? Like eight skill points to spend, right? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. You know, I'm spreading that around and I'm just like, all right, you know, and I, when whenever you have that skill point dump, it's like, man, okay, I'm going to spread this around. I'm probably not going to be able to remember everything that I'm supposed to do with the skill points that I've awarded myself, right? So you're, you're sort of, struggling with understanding the variety and, and what you can do. Now I'll say this, when I was assigning those skill points, I was sort of, you know, you read the, the, the quick thing because you want to play, you only have 90 minutes, you want to get into it. Um, I, I didn't see a lot of stuff there that was like, oh, wow, I can't wait to try this out. I right. think maybe some of that stuff will show itself, you know, as, uh, uh when we get the final game and, and sort of like really dig down into the granularity of it all. But I do think, the skill stuff from what we saw, I, there was nothing really that wowed me in a really substantial way. And and going back to the gun conversation, you know, I think, uh, I don't think this game from what I've seen so far is really nailing the, the thing that Borderlands did. If that's the comparison where Borderlands, it's just insanity, right? Like you have a gun that every time you reload, like someone's head explodes, right? Like it's always something really strange and, and kind of fun. I don't know if it's going to be ramped up to that degree of sort of, you know, uh, insanity here, but, um, you know. It, that's what we saw, right? Like we're just going off the impressions that we can make off of what we saw. And for my money, like the 
I was not really excited about any of the guns that I held. Yeah, and like with any game with the skill tree, uh, I always like to hover over every single thing, even way far down the line, uh, just to see like, oh man, that sounds awesome. I got to work my way towards that with my skill points. And I went over everything on my character's skill tree, and it's like it was a bunch of stuff where it's like, okay, this area of effect is more, or this damage multiplier is more, or this like, there wasn't a lot of like, oh wow, this totally changes that ability uh, in, in a really fun sounding way, and I want to direct myself towards that. It was just like, okay, I guess I'm just gradually going to be getting stronger longer uh and my abilities will get a little bit better each time like it's uh yeah not a lot of incentive so then uh what, what do you guys think can happen between now and launch to maybe uh to get it into shape uh for or, i mean back or does it sound like you are completely losing the faith on this you think there's still a chance to, like that final product is going to be good dan do you think there's any chance this comes out and and does it for you well i'll say the thing that like right now, you, you're not going to change the core of the game or the skill tree or what right. it is or anything in, in the time before it comes out. The one thing I, I would hope improves a bit is the AI in this was real bad in that, like, I can't tell you how many times I would see. And again, in 90 minutes, this happened numerous times. I would walk into like a tunnel and there would be three, you know, dudes there with guns. And I would walk up and they would just be like facing the wall or running into the wall. And I would test and like see how close I could get to them before they like reacted to me being there. And there were several times I could just walk straight up to people that were facing the wrong way and then just like try to get their attention and they wouldn't notice and just shoot them in the back of the head or whatever. It's uh, or they are just running straight into a tree or something. Uh, it's it does not seem to be in great shape. Honestly, it's not it's not broken, but there were enough times in 90 minutes where I was like, mm, there's some work to be done here. Yeah, I mean, I, so I if I experienced that, it didn't really like make a lasting uh impression i don't remember that being the case for me and again like everyone's gonna have a different sort of playthrough i think for me like i mean look this this game's done right like this yes. there's not a, a ton of stuff that can change as aside from like maybe a little bit of finesse and polishing and and you know uh smoothing out the edges a little bit i think where i remain interested is because i'm that like spooky mark right where like I love spooky stuff. This is a vampire game. There's a couple like spooky environments that I'm sort of into that I was just like, oh, this is creepy. I like, you know, I like creepy stuff. That's my thing. I like, I like horror. I like, you know, it's why I, you like I me. Like, exactly. That's why I tolerate all of you. Um, <laughs> no. So like, you know, for me, it's, um, I, you know, I get drawn into that because there is a bit of like some cool enemy design. I saw some of like the more powerful vampires are, are pretty cool looking. Uh, you just saw like the elevator ability here. Yeah. That's the player that I had. And you know, like I, I was like, wow, that looks cool, but it's like, am I going to use that a lot? Um, so, you know, I just think there's, there, there's, there's a, some ingredients here in, in the stew that I'm, I'm interested in, in tasting, if that makes sense. But, um, I think overall I, uh, I, I'm curious to see what it's going to be like out of the gate, right? Like we did get dropped in. I can't remember how many hours they said we were getting dropped into. Uh, what, do you remember, Dan? Was it like I think three it was, or was it, it like single seven? digits? I, I think I was debating between those two myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was under 10 for sure. Yeah. So, you know, uh, would you think of like the setting? Would you think of the environment? There, there's some cool things there. I like the idea of just this kind of like, you know, small to mid-sized American town. And like they, they do some cool like uh, there's there's an area where there's like a dock and it looks like some huge event has happened. And uh, like a tidal wave almost has kind of broken it. Like imagine like an asteroid landed uh, in the water near a dock and but it froze during the splash, you know, so yeah. it's like this splash that's like going outward and you see boats caught up in it. and It's all kind of frozen in time. And like that thing grabbed me. That thing looked really cool. And I, I do like the very kind of like, oh, here's this like old movie theater or this town square type thing. Like the, the setting is is pretty cool, but like here's here's how you can see the boat thing right there. Um, uh, there wasn't a lot of variety. I don't know if uh, you know, sometimes you'll you'll start with this map and then you get to a story point and then there's a whole another map and another map or something like that. Uh, we only had this one area uh, you can see in the map here to to mess with, and there wasn't a lot of variety. Uh, a lot of buildings, a little kind of downtown area, movie theater, houses. Um, yeah, it's not a ton of detail, not a lot of personality, um, but I, I, I didn't hate it. 
Yeah, I think um, I the, the part of the setting that I kind of dug, like it's very much like a Cape Cod kind of like island in Massachusetts. It's like a fishing town kind of thing. Like I, I dug some of that. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but yeah, you know, walking around that place, you know, it's uh, there did, you know, especially in the little sort of area we were in, it, it did feel like a lot of the same kind of stuff. You know, there's there's these little sort of like, what do they call them? Like blood clouds or blood storms or yeah, you know, that like whatever. that red fog that would yeah. you know, block off areas. Yeah. And you have to like dispel that there's these, uh, sort of areas that are, uh, vampire nests where you clear it out. It's, it's sort of like a, you know, taking down a tower, if you will. Um, you know, I think like some of that stuff, I could see becoming a little trite and you're sort of like mm -hmm. trying to make your way through that stuff. Um, you know, I, uh, th there are some interesting ideas. I, I do like the fact that like most of the vampires, you cannot kill without staking them. Um, there's certain weapons that will stake them for you, which I thought the was UV a neat light idea. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's a UV weapon, which is pretty cool. That will like freeze them. And then you just go over and smash them. Uh, yeah. You know, I think there's, 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 like I said, there's a lot of interesting ideas in there whether or not it all comes together for a, a totally compelling package i think uh remains to be seen yeah we're uh running out of footage to show so i figure we, we might as well wrap it up i guess uh, this, this comes out in may uh it's gonna be in in game pass uh i think it's probably gonna be one of those games where people will have a, good, a really good time with it when they are playing with their friends which will be very easy because it's going to be in game pass but um yeah, i'll be interested to see if it, if it stands up on its own as a single player experience like a lot of other arcane games do yeah, i didn't so, know it was game pass that helps a ton yes yeah for sure so here's the thing right like and i want to ask you one more question grub too because you're yeah. you know you're only seeing this so we played single player for me like i, I you know, I, I like I'm always thinking single player first, right? Because mm -hmm. I Same. don't always want to sure. play. And I thought it was interesting that they demoed the game for us in single mm -hmm. player. Mode. I think that's, I, think, I mean, that's the thing that has to be proven, right? Like that's right. I, I think we can all see how that, like this is this was going to be a fine Borderlands with friends. Like you know, even the bad Borderlands games, people still enjoy playing with the, with friends. So this is not going to be uh, a hard hard thing to pull off here. It is that that audience that, that is coming in from other arcane games are they going to be satisfied with this are they going to be able to express themselves the way they have in other arcane games that's still a oh, real question no yeah. compared to like dishonored and the, the freedom I, I felt in dishonored to to kind of play it my way and experiment with a bunch of weird stuff and everything like i didn't feel uh, an ounce of that in right this. and that's that's what they, they keep they keep talking that up saying that's in here so it's like i, I kind of need to see what they mean yeah, um, I, I feel like with Don Dishonored, you feel that right away with the powers and stuff they give you here. Uh, no, no, this felt very run, run of the mill, I would say. Yeah, Grub, I'm curious how you are uh, ingesting all this. I mean, you know, you haven't played it, but the footage, I think, gives you a pretty sort of good idea, especially of what we played, right, Dan? Yeah. Like, um, what, what are you, what, what's your take? Yeah, I, I, so I basically, I'm, I'm like... I was trying to find a reason to be excited about it. I'm still kind of looking for that footing where uh, it is. It, it, it's I, I do like the setting. I like that it's you know vampire town in uh, you know in you know the uh, northeast uh, in New England. Uh, that's that's cool. That's a good idea. Uh, whether or not I'm going to be able to, I, I think I'm with Dan a little bit. I need to be able to express myself, and I need to be distracted by a very uh, not not necessarily dynamic open world, but an open world that feels very much designed in, in a way that's like. Yeah, we we know that you are the kind of player that's going to want to like discover things on your own or make it feel like you're discovering things on your own. And I'm not seeing much of that. Uh, that yeah, maybe that's not the game they're making. That that's fine. But then I'm like, okay, well then the gameplay, the uh, the the combat scenarios need to be very interesting. And from what I'm seeing, it's like this looks like the stuff we've been doing for a long time now. Yes. Yeah, uh, there's I think nothing about the actual gunplay or enemy encounters outside of like what Backlar mentioned about like, oh, you have to stake some enemies or use UV light or specific weapons. The actual moment to moment gunplay is shit we've been playing for like a decade plus. I, I think the thing that I'm look uh, curious about and looking forward to seeing how it sort of pans out is, you know, in 90 minutes, it's tough to really like you know, track progression. It's tough, it's tough yes. to really like appreciate a tangible sort of evolution of where you've gone in the game. So I'll be interested to see how that shakes out just because, like I said, it was 
mostly, you know, impossible to tell how that works. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's like cultists who are obsessed with the vampires as well. Like they sort of like idolize them where you're just there to kind of, I guess, kill everyone. So, you know, how's that all tie in? And like I said, how do, you know, how, how do you sort of track and progress your evolution as the character you play? Like, Mm -hmm. are you collecting cool stuff that, you know, uh, that sort of comes together in a real satisfying way? Like, does any of that stuff really uh, stick the landing? I think is uh, stuff that I would like to uh, find out and and kind of be able to make a a, a better sort of uh, takeaway from it all. Yeah, agreed. Cool. All right. Yeah. I feel like at this point, if I don't, if I don't hear something like if one of you guys is playing it and it's like, oh, it actually, you know, as you play like the progression, some of the abilities you get late in the game and stuff, or midway through the game, like are really cool. Like I at this point, I think I have lost interest in playing it. Okay. Well, there you have it. That is Redfall. I think May 2nd, that's when it's out. Xbox Game Pass, and it's also coming out on PC. Uh, We'll be tracking this game more as it gets closer to launch, but for now, thanks so much, Jeff Grubb, for running this. Thank you, Dan. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Beckler. Bye.